Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Da, and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to my Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, or CAF series. Um, I started off about architecture, and I kind of thought, you know what, I really want to do Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, um, specifically, so the CAF, or architecture framework. Where it's a cloud adoption framework, but it's all to do with architecture, really. Um, so we're almost six seven episodes in now or eight episodes in but the, the first three or four that i did were very much um just off the cuff me kind of brainstorming and d you know, doing exercises and like examples of stuff and i, I really it really did not when i thought about it, i was really not it was getting to me a little bit so I, I pivoted started again a couple of episodes ago where i went back to my structured approach where i do a bit of a slide deck and then i do a demo at the end so that's where we're at, at the moment today in today's episode we are going to be talking about uh, basically resource consistency and management group so again very much being the last two three episodes have been very much focused around governance we will then move into some stuff other stuff like identity security and you know stuff like that um so i want to talk about resource consistency and and, and uh, management groups today so the agenda for today's episode is talk about resource consistency then we'll talk a little bit about resource hierarchy and then structuring you know for scale as well so why why does it matter right why why resource consistency does it why does it matter some of the key concepts first of all um as you know as, you, as your cloud environment grows and a lot of them you know they can grow and that's the whole point of it right it's going to grow exponentially maintaining consistency does become critical and, and difficult and without it you're gonna you know risk chaos and i've seen it i've seen it in a, in a massive environments where they, they've just not had that consistency and it just causes a nightmare Resources scattered across multiple subscriptions, inconsistent naming, missing tags, and massive security gaps. Some of those key, some of those key sort of concepts I spoke about. First of all, consistency enables automation. Standardized naming and, and tagging will allow scripts and policies to work much more reliably. It improves governance, as I've said a lot of time, and reporting. So it's easier to track costs, ownership, and um, compliance. And then you've got reduced operational risk as well. So predictable resource structure is going to simplify troubleshooting and auditing. Can you imagine trying to, to find all production virtual machines across your environment? If naming and tagging aren't consistent, you know, it's like searching for a needle in a haystack, right? Uh, but if they've got like VM hyphen prod, for example, in its name, straight away, just search for that and bring them all up. So that's why it's so important. Talk about resource consistency now. The, the, we've talked about resource consistency. Let's talk about hierarchy now, uh, specifically within Azure. So Azure organizes resources in a hierarchy that supports governance at scale. And understanding that structure is, is key to applying those policies and managing access uh, effectively. So the first, we'll talk about a bit of a breakdown. At the top level, we've got, we're going to be looking at it in the demo, by the way. We've got management groups at that top level. Top level containers for organizing your subscriptions, essentially. We then have, within management groups, you can either have management groups or you can have subscriptions. So these are containers for, for billing uh, thresholds, basically, uh, billing uh, perimeters, uh, access control perimeters and resource limits as well. You then have resource groups. These are logical containers for, for related resources. And then obviously the resources, these like virtual machines, storage accounts, you know, databases. So those are the, as you can see, those are the four levels uh, as they go down, right? Uh, now let's talk a little about, keep on talking about that, that sort of hierarchy and, and why is it important, basically. So policies and role-based access control can be applied at any level, right? We're going to be talking about those, especially we've talked about policy, we'll talk about RBAC as we go along in, in this series. Inheritance as well allows a centralized governance. So if we, if we just go back a step here, anything you apply at that top level, the management group level, that's going to filter down to the subscription level and filter down to resource group. But anything you apply at resource group level won't be applied at the subscription level. It doesn't, it doesn't filter up, it filters down, right? Uh, and it's going to enable separation of environments. You know, a good example is prod versus dev, right? Uh, an example, you can apply a policy at management group level to enforce encryption across all subscriptions. And this is going to save time and, and ensure you have that consistency, okay? Uh, let's talk about structuring at scale with, with, with those management groups now. So a management group is going to help you scale governance by mirroring your organizational structure. You can group subscriptions by business unit, environment, or even region. 
some best practices, you know, create a root management group and, and build that hierarchy. So, you know, corp, prod, dev, test, sandbox. So make sure they're all separate and you have that hierarchy in place. Apply Azure policies and RBAC roles at the management group level, right? So that, again, best practice uh, is always to do the high level so you can filter down. Use naming conventions and, and tagging standards across all levels, and I've gone into those in a previous video in this series already. Assigning a policy to the to the product management group ensures all the production subscriptions follow the same security standards without any sort of manual configuration, right? So very, very useful, very powerful. Right, we're going to create that management group structure now. So let's jump back into the Azure portal and show you how that structure goes. Okay, we're in the Azure tenant. We want to go to management groups. You can search right at the top here, but I've already got it in my shortcuts. And this is where we can set up our structure, right? Okay, so I've already got a tenant root group. I actually want an organizational one. So I'm just going to put here IT geek hyphen root. Okay, I'm just going to go I am IT geek root M G M T. Submit that. Hopefully below the uh, tenant group, it will create that. Okay, then we've, that's created for us, which is great. Now below this level, I actually want to create another one. So through this one, let's call this um, management. And this is where I'm going to have all my. Um, so I'm going to have all my sort of identity, those sort of you know the ones that are going to be managing my environment, my identity, my connectivity, that sort of stuff. Okay, so. But let's look straight away. I can you can see something's wrong here because I actually wanted so although you can see I am IT geek root management is a child of a tenant root group. I actually wanted that to be a a, a child of um, the root management group there. So really, I should move that to the so its new parent is management group. So I can then. Um, expand that and it will show the management one straight away there you can see and then within here i actually want to create another child group called identity i want to spell identity right as well <laughs> uh let's just copy and paste that and i actually want to create another one called workloads and in the identity one while what I would what I will be doing is so I've got these six subscriptions here I'm going to move um, identity into the identity one uh, so I'll be creating within management I'm going to create that in a minute um, I'm going to create and move the dev and sandbox and test into the workload one so there i've got management but i'm going to within management i'm going to create an identity one and a, a connectivity one um uh, so i'll quickly create those and i'll show you my hierarchy basically okay so spent a bit of time just creating these different groups and moving because i've only got one subscription there that's my my main demo so i'm not going to touch that in case i screw some up but essentially i've got a management underneath my root management i've got a management and I've got workloads. Under my management, this is where I have connectivity identity. And I have my connectivity subscription and my identity subscription. Now, these are the ones where I'm going to be. So you might even have another one for um, you, maybe the maybe I've called that something wrong. Maybe yeah, that needs to be called something else. But you would essentially have something for your network and some of your identity. It's meant to like for your management of your like, you know, your logging where your logging goes and stuff like that. And then workloads. This is where my production, my dev, my sandbox and my test would go. So I've got my subscriptions underneath the relevant and you can see there there's a hierarchy and underneath the subscriptions will be the resource groups you don't see those here you have to click on the subscriptions to see those um, but that's just what i would show you how you can actually implement that hierarchy within your management groups um, and again some of these needs to be designed needs to be planned out and needs to match the, your your sort of organization so everyone's is different right and the naming conventions those will be different as well and i've i've been very broad with my naming convention my naming of it you will keep you, you have yours has to match the naming convention that you've chosen um so obviously mg for, for management hyphen prod whatever right all defined by your management uh, your naming convention you decide 
so hopefully again you, you've enjoyed that you're getting a bit more understanding around governance and especially within the cloud adoption of the cloud um, adoption framework or CAF within Microsoft Cloud. Uh, I've got some useful links on my LinkedIn, so please connect with me. Uh, you can ask me any questions. You can also drop me a comment on the video as well if you've got any questions. Uh, I always try and answer all my comments that people leave, and I'm always grateful for all the feedback as well. I've also got a link to the Microsoft Learn CAF documentation, so you can have a look through that. Uh, but also, something that's quite quite close to me is my sort of membership, and, and I offer a lot of the Microsoft exam content on there. So I've got all the level one, level two, level three links below. Have a read of those, and have a you know if you're doing any sort of Microsoft exams and you see the exam you're doing on my content, by all means join as a member and get access to that and loads of other benefits as well. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Until next time, bye.